May 31st through June 6th. Doctrine and Covenants, sections 60 through 62. All flesh is in mine hand. President Ezra Taft Benson taught that when we study the scriptures, quote, testimonies will increase, commitment will be strengthened, families will be fortified, personal revelation will flow, end quote. From the Power of the Word, Ensign May 1986. In June 1831, Joseph Smith held a conference with the elders of the church in Kirtland. There, the Lord organized some of the elders into companionships and sent them to Jackson County, Missouri with this charge. Preach by the way. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 52, verse 10. Many of the elders did so diligently, but others did not. So when the time came to travel back to Kirtland, the Lord said, quote, With some elders I am not well pleased. For they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. End quote. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verse 2. Many of us can feel sympathy for these elders. We may also feel hesitant to open our mouths and share the gospel. Maybe we too are impeded by the fear of man. Maybe we doubt our worthiness or abilities. Whatever our reasons, the Lord knoweth the weakness of man and how to succor us. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verse 1. Scattered throughout these revelations to early missionaries are reassurances that can help us overcome our fears about sharing the gospel, or other fears we might be facing. I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above. I am able to make you holy. All flesh is in mine hand. And be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verses 4 and 7, section 61, verses 6 and 36. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study. Doctrine and Covenants, section 60 and 62. The Lord is pleased when I open my mouth to share the gospel. We've all had experiences when we could have shared the gospel with someone, but for some reason we didn't. As you read the Lord's words to early missionaries who failed to open their mouths, think about your own opportunities to share the gospel. How is your testimony of the gospel like a talent or a treasure from God? In what ways do we sometimes hide our talent? See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verse 2. See also Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. The Lord corrected these early missionaries, but He also tried to inspire them. What encouraging messages from him do you find in sections 60 and 62? How do these messages build your confidence in sharing the gospel? In the days ahead, look for opportunities to open your mouth and share what God has entrusted to you. See also Doctrine and Covenants, section 33, verses 8 through 10, section 103, verses 9 through 10. Dieter F. Uchtdorf, Missionary Work, Sharing What is in Your Heart, and Signer Liahona, May 2019. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 61, Verses 5-6 through 6, and 14-18. through 18. Are all waters cursed by the Lord? The Lord's warning in Doctrine and Covenants, Section 61, was in part a warning about the dangers His people would face while traveling to Zion on the Missouri River, which was known at that time for being dangerous. This warning should not be interpreted to mean that we should avoid traveling by water. The Lord has all power, including power over the waters. See verse 1. Doctrine and Covenants, section 61 through 62. The Lord is all-powerful and can preserve me. On the way back to Kirtland, Joseph Smith and other church leaders had a life-threatening experience on the Missouri River. See Saints, volume 1, pages 133 through 134. The Lord used this opportunity to warn and instruct His servants. What do you find in Doctrine and Covenants 61 that encourages you to put your trust in the Lord as you face your own challenges? For example, why is it important to know that God is from everlasting to everlasting? See verse 1. There are similar insights in section 62. What does the Lord teach you about Himself and His power in this revelation? Ponder faith-building experiences you have had when the Lord helped you overcome spiritual or physical adversity. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 62 The Lord wants me to make some decisions as seemeth me good. Sometimes the Lord gives us specific direction, and other matters He leaves up to us to decide. 
How do you see this principle illustrated in Doctrine and Covenants section 62? See also Doctrine and Covenants section 60 verse 5 and section 61 verse 22. How have you seen this principle in your life? Why is it good for us to make some decisions without specific direction from God? See also Ether chapter 2 verses 18 through 25. Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 27 through 28. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening. Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verses 2 through 3. Why were some early missionaries hesitant to share the gospel? Why do we sometimes hesitate? Consider role-playing how family members could share the gospel in a variety of settings. Doctrine and Covenants, section 61, verses 36 through 39. What reasons do we see in these verses to be of good cheer? See also John chapter 16, verse 33. Perhaps your family could write or draw pictures of things that bring them joy and collect them in a good cheer jar. Be sure to include pictures of the Savior and reminders of His love for us. Throughout the week, when family members need a reminder of reasons to be happy, they could choose something from the jar. Doctrine and Covenants, section 61, verse 36. How could you help your family remember that the Savior is in our midst? You could decide together where to prominently display a picture of Him in your home. How can we invite the Savior into our daily lives? Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verse 3. Maybe you could have a family testimony meeting after reading this verse. To explain what a testimony is, you could share portions of President M. Russell Ballard's message, Pure Testimony. Ensigner Liahona, November 2004. Why is it good to record our testimonies? Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verses 5 and 8. Why doesn't the Lord give commandments about every aspect of our lives? According to verse 8, how are we to make decisions? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested Song, Testimony. Hymns number 137. Improving Personal Study. Let the Spirit guide your study. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Be sensitive to His whisperings as He guides you toward the things you need to learn each day. Even if His whisperings suggest that you read or study a different topic than you usually would or in a different way. Section 60. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri, August 8, 1831. On this occasion, the elders who had traveled to Jackson County and participated in the dedication of the land and the temple site desired to know what they were to do. 1 through 9. The elders are to preach the gospel in the congregations of the wicked. 10 through 14. They should not idle away their time nor bury their talents. 15 through 17. They may wash their feet as a testimony against those who reject the gospel. Behold, thus saith the Lord unto the elders of his church, who are to return speedily to the land from whence they came. Behold, it pleaseth me that you have come up hither. But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. And it shall come to pass, if they are not more faithful unto me, it shall be taken away, even that which they have. For I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above and among the armies of the earth. And in the day when I shall make up my jewels, all men shall know what it is that bespeaketh the power of God. But verily I will speak unto you concerning your journey unto the land from whence you came. Let there be a craft made, or bought, as seemeth you good, it mattereth not unto me. And take your journey speedily for the place which is called St. Louis. And from thence let my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, take their journey for Cincinnati. And in this place let them lift up their voice, and declare my word with loud voices, without wrath or doubting, lifting up holy hands upon them. For I am able to make you holy, and your sins are forgiven you. And let the residue take their journey from St. Louis, two by two, and preach the word, not in haste, 
among the congregations of the wicked, until they return to the churches from whence they came. And all this for the good of the churches, for this intent have I sent them. And let my servant Edward Partridge impart of the money which I have given him, a portion unto mine elders who are commanded to return. And he that is able, let him return it by the way of the agent, and he that is not, of him it is not required. And now I speak of the residue who are to come unto this land. Behold, they have been sent to preach my gospel among the congregations of the wicked. Wherefore, I give unto them a commandment thus, Thou shalt not idle away thy time, neither shalt thou bury thy talent, that it may not be known. And after thou hast come up unto the land of Zion, and hast proclaimed my word, thou shalt speedily return, proclaiming my word among the congregations of the wicked, not in haste, neither in wrath, nor with strife, and shake off the dust of thy feet against those who receive thee not, not in their presence, lest thou provoke them, but in secret, and wash thy feet as a testimony against them in the day of judgment. Behold, this is sufficient for you, and the will of him who hath sent you, and by the mouth of my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., it shall be made known concerning Sidney Rigdon and Oliver Cowdery, the residue hereafter. Even so. Section 61. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet, on the bank of the Missouri River, McIlwain's Bend, August 12, 1831. On their return trip to Kirtland, the prophet and ten elders had traveled down the Missouri River in canoes. On the third day of the journey, many dangers were experienced. Elder William W. Phelps, in a daylight vision, saw the destroyer riding in power upon the face of the waters. 1 through 12. The Lord has decreed many destructions upon the waters. 13 through 22. The waters were cursed by John, and the destroyer rides upon their face. 23 through 29. Some have power to command the waters. 30 through 35. Elders are to journey two by two and preach the gospel. 36 through 39. They are to prepare for the coming of the Son of Man. Behold and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power who is from everlasting to everlasting, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, verily thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who are assembled upon this spot, whose sins are now forgiven you. For I the Lord forgive sins, and am merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. But verily I say unto you, that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters, whilst the inhabitants on either side are perishing in unbelief. Nevertheless, I suffered it that ye might bear record. Behold, there are many dangers upon the waters, and more especially hereafter. For I the Lord have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. Wherefore it is expedient that my servant Sidney Gilbert and my servant William W. Phelps be in haste upon their errand and mission. Nevertheless, I would not suffer that ye should part until ye were chastened for all your sins, that you might be one, that you might not perish in wickedness. But now verily I say, it behoveth me that ye should part. Wherefore let my servants Sidney Gilbert and William W. Phelps take their former company, and let them take their journey in haste, that they may fill their mission, and through faith they shall overcome. And inasmuch as they are faithful, they shall be preserved, and I the Lord will be with them. And let the residue take that which is needful for clothing. Let my servant Sidney Gilbert take that which is not needful with him, as you shall agree. And now behold, for your good, I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things. 
and I the Lord will reason with you as with men in days of old. Behold, I the Lord in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it shall be said in days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I the Lord in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it, in its time, for the use of my saints, that they may partake the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment, that what I say unto one I say unto all, that you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters, that they come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail, and they are caught in snares. I the Lord have decreed, and the destroyer rideth upon the face thereof, and I revoke not the decree. I the Lord was angry with you yesterday, but today mine anger is turned away. Wherefore, let those concerning whom I have spoken, that should take their journey in haste, again I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste. And it mattereth not unto me, after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or by land. Let this be as it is made known unto them, according to their judgments hereafter. And now concerning my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, let them come not again upon the waters, save it be upon the canal, while journeying unto their homes. Or in other words, they shall not come upon the waters to journey, save upon the canal. Behold, I the Lord have appointed a way for the journeying of my saints, and behold, this is the way, that after they leave the canal, they shall journey by land, inasmuch as they are commanded to journey and go up unto the land of Zion. And they shall do like unto the children of Israel, pitching their tents by the way. And behold, this commandment you shall give unto all your brethren. Nevertheless, unto whom is given power to command the waters, unto him it is given by the Spirit to know all his ways. Wherefore, let him do as the Spirit of the living God commandeth him, whether upon the land or upon the waters, as it remaineth with me to do hereafter. And unto you is given the course for the saints, or the way for the saints of the camp of the Lord to journey. And again verily I say unto you, My servants Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, shall not open their mouths in the congregations of the wicked until they arrive at Cincinnati. And in that place they shall lift up their voices unto God against that people. Yea, unto him whose anger is kindled against their wickedness, a people who are well nigh ripened for destruction. And from thence let them journey for the congregations of their brethren, for their labors even now are wanted more abundantly among them than among the congregations of the wicked. And now concerning the residue, let them journey and declare the word among the congregations of the wicked, inasmuch as it is given. And inasmuch as they do this, they shall rid their garments, and they shall be spotless before me. And let them journey together, or two by two, as seemeth them good. Only let my servant Reynolds Cahoon, and my servant Samuel H. Smith, with whom I am well pleased, be not separated until they return to their homes, and this for a wise purpose in me. And now verily I say unto you, and what I say unto one I say unto all, Be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you. And inasmuch as you have humbled yourselves before me, the blessings of the kingdom are yours. Gird up your loins, and be watchful, and be sober, looking forth for the coming of the Son of Man, for he cometh in an hour you think not. Pray always that you enter not into temptation, that you may abide the day of his coming, whether in life or in death. Even so. Section 62. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet on the bank of the Missouri River at Sheraton, Missouri, August 13, 1831. On this day the Prophet and his group, who were on their way from Independence to Kirtland, 
met several elders who were on their way to the land of Zion, and after joyful salutations, received this revelation. One through three, testimonies are recorded in heaven. Four through nine, the elders are to travel and preach according to judgment and as directed by the Spirit. Behold and hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, even Jesus Christ, your Advocate, who knoweth the weakness of man, and how to succor them who are tempted. And verily mine eyes are upon those who have not as yet gone up unto the land of Zion. Wherefore your mission is not yet full. Nevertheless, ye are blessed, for the testimony which ye have borne is recorded in heaven for the angels to look upon, and they rejoice over you, and your sins are forgiven you. And now continue your journey, assemble yourselves upon the land of Zion, and hold a meeting and rejoice together, and offer a sacrament unto the Most High. And then you may return to bear record, yea, even all together, or two by two, as seemeth you good, it mattereth not unto me. Only be faithful, and declare glad tidings unto the inhabitants of the earth, or among the congregations of the wicked. Behold, I, the Lord, have brought you together, that the promise might be fulfilled, that the faithful among you should be preserved and rejoice together in the land of Missouri. I, the Lord, promise the faithful and cannot lie. I, the Lord, am willing, if any among you desire to ride upon horses, or upon mules, or in chariots, he shall receive this blessing, if he receive it from the hand of the Lord, with a thankful heart in all things. These things remain with you to do according to judgment and the directions of the Spirit. Behold, the kingdom is yours. And behold, and lo, I am with the faithful always. Even so, 